I'm so grateful that you stopped scrolling um, to be here with me today. Thank you for this month, um, for all of you who have, have faithfully studied this book of Proverbs. If you've missed any of the videos, um, they are on our Facebook page at Holland Park Baptist Church. And don't miss tomorrow when Jeff Beach takes us to Proverbs 31. You will not want to miss that. The adventure I've chosen today for Proverbs 30 is verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. The word of God does not need a refining process like our hearts do. We've already studied about um, refining ourselves as gold and silver um, to remove the dross and the impurities, which you know, the word of God does not need that because it comes from God. It is already pure. Everything uttered by the Lord has already been refined. There's no doubting it. There's no wondering of it. There's no questioning it. The next verse warns about adding to it. It doesn't need anything added to it. It doesn't need anything taken from it or even brought alongside it. It is the word of God. It is pure. Pure in the Hebrew word, seraph, that I am sure I just butchered with my North Alabama accent, is refined. It's without impurity. It's already set apart and holy because it is of him. It's tested and it is found flawless. Because of this, the next part of the verse is true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. My shield, my defensive weapon against my enemy. The imagery stands the hairs on the back of my neck on end. All war raged against me, but the Lord God stands between me and what is meant to harm me. Just as he describes through Paul in Ephesians 6, 16 in the full armor of God, where he says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Picture that, friends. The pure, refined, undefiled, perfect word of God that I may have perfect undoubted faith in becomes my shield against the enemy and everything he wants to throw my way. It makes my heart race. It makes me want to shout in the middle of this empty room. He is so good and he is so mighty and his word is so pure. But that final piece of Proverbs 30 verse 5 puts a call of action to me, to us, where it says, to those who take refuge in him. Where do I take my refuge? Yes, his word is pure. Yes, his shield is there. But I have to take the step to bring myself up under that shield of protection, under the authority of the word of God. This book, it doesn't always line up with how I feel. As a matter of fact, more times than not, it is the exact opposite of my feelings. But this morning I stood in this worship center and I, I sang a song by Cody Carnes and he has a verse, a call of action to me that says, I won't be formed by feelings. I'll hold fast to what is true. The song is Christ be magnified. I will hold fast to what is true. What is true? This is true. This is my strength. This is my shield. This is my protection. This is where I run when nothing else makes sense. It's the standard by which everything else must be held. I am, as you're watching this, two days away from a seven-year mark of what uh, was the beginning of a two-year nightmare for my family and me. If you made a list of all the things of a mother's nightmare, my people pretty much experienced it all in 2014 and 15. 
at the peak pinnacle of it, I was in the back seat of a car racing down 565 with two of my dear friends in the front, one weaving in and out of traffic, one feeding me ice chips um, after we had just dismissed me <laughs> from the hospital where I was battling cancer. Ahead of us were three vehicles. One was one of our pastors driving my husband and my two elder children. One was another pastor driving our vehicle so we would have it there on site. And one was a third pastor and his wife with some of our belongings that we might need. We were all chasing a helicopter with my 12 year old little boy. His arm was nearly severed from a wreck. I could go on for the rest of my days telling you of the goodness of God over the last two years. But let me just suffice it by saying that I'm standing before you now, cancer free. And my son is currently lifting weights with his varsity baseball team preparing for his senior year. That's not what I want you to focus on. I want you to focus on that woman in the back seat. She didn't have sermon notes from listening to Pastor Brett all these years. She didn't have her latest women's Bible study. She didn't even have her Bible at all. And her phone, surprisingly, <laughs> was almost dead. No, all she had was what had been stored here. That woman also did not get a warning on January 30th of 2014 that her whole life was fixing to fall apart. Solomon counseled his son in Proverbs 7 to have a living, breathing relationship with the Word of God. It should not just be something that gets written here, that it actually has to be burned and inscribed on our hearts. We don't know when those tough days are coming. We don't know when those arrows from the evil one are going to come flying. But we can know <laughs> It will come and that this will be our protection as a benediction in closing with you I want this to be my prayer for you and yours and for me and mine Deuteronomy 11 18 through 21 commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these words of mine tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you are on the road. When you're going to bed, when you're getting up, write them on the doorposts of your houses and on the gates so that as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may flourish in the land of the Lord God swore to give you and your ancestors. Stand on his truth today. You can be sure of it. He is able. God bless you.